to this meeting of the Stalin Society. We're going to be showing you a film uh, about made in, uh, uh, called Made in Dagna, and it's to celebrate the International Working Class Women's Women's Day, which was on 8th of March. But of course, this is the nearest we could we could we could arrange to ce celebrate it. I just want to say a couple of sentences. We got our speakers here on on the subject. All I want to say is that the liberation of women is not possible except under the conditions of socialism. Although capitalism has made advances over the previous feudal society in the sense that it introduced women into industry and they started working and got out of the home. What capitalism doesn't do is impose, uh, liberate women. It imposes a double burden. Women not only have to go out to earn a living, but they're also responsible uh, for something which keep, keeps them tied to the kitchen, to the nursery, uh, and, 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 to the, and to the washroom. And it is women's liberation is not possible unless these facilities are provided whereby women are supplied with cheap and affordable creche, nurseries, dining, dining rooms, and all facilities for cleaning, laundering, uh, etc. And this can only be done, done under the conditions of socialism. And the history of the socialist countries uh, of the uh, Soviet Union, Eastern Central European countries, North Korea, Vietnam, China show that these facilities can be provided only when th there is not the profit motive that actually eats into these, these facilities. So women who want to fight for their liberation have got to not see men as their enemy, but they have to see capitalism as their enemy, as indeed it is the enemy of work, working men as well. And it's only by in the struggle to fight for socialism can women become steeled for the future society in which their liberation would be possible. And men and women would be able to participate in industry, in jobs, as well as in political and social life of, of, their, of their countries on an equal footing. They wouldn't have to worry about who is going to look after the children. They won't have to worry about who is going to do, do the cooking, because these facilities will be provided socially. So although capitalism has eliminated, not all, but a lot of laws that discriminated against women, what it doesn't do is to provide them with the social facilities which constitutes women's bondage, namely being tied to the drudgery of the kitchen, the nursery, and looking after children as being their sole responsibility. So the, with these words, I will say no more. And we've got a couple of comrades, female comrades, who would say something. i first ask Ella and then Deborah on my left. Right, well, um, the film that you're about to see, Made in Dagenham, it's obviously a commercial film, and uh, no doubt we'll be having a dis debate afterwards as to how good a film it is. Um, but it is, it, it records a very, very important event in the history of the British working class movement, which was the victory of the Dagenham women workers to get equal pay with men uh, and to be recognised as skilled workers, which they were, uh, and therefore to have the wage level that skill, skilled workers had. And how, it shows how difficult that struggle was and uh, how the union wasn't a lot of help and all that kind of thing. So it, it, it's a very good and instructive film. Uh, the struggle that, of, of these uh, Dagenham machine workers um, actually uh, was very, very important. It, it fired the enthusiasm uh, for the women's movement. It, it, it made it very obvious that women's situation, uh, you know, women were suffering oppression and that something needed to be done about it. Uh, it, it awakened consciousness. It was a very important uh, movement at, at the time. And uh, the consequence of it, of course, uh, was the rise of a women's liberation movement. Uh, this was one which presented tremendous possibilities for uh, working to bring consciousness to the working class of all the points that Apal has just been making, that women's emancipation, which is 
a basic democratic demand, really, but one that's never going to be fulfilled unless uh, we fight for socialism together. Um, so this is the message, really, that uh, needed to pervade the women's liberation movement. Uh, and in order to do that, you actually had to have the right to speak. Uh, but, of course, the bourgeoisie isn't stupid. Uh, they could see the danger. And they were mobilized, or there was a mobilization to actually prevent the voice of the revolutionary proletariat from being heard in the women's liberation movement. And the specific tactic was to drown out that voice with uh, petty bourgeois feminism uh, that would actually turn the women's movement into a laughing stock. So everybody knows about burning bras and all the ridiculous things that these people did. Uh, and the actual real and true message of that whole movement was completely drowned out. And what was interesting to see was that the people mobilizing, organizing uh, against the revolutionary politics was in fact people who called themselves Marxists, the Trotskyites and the revisionists. Uh, and unfailingly, they, they have that effect. That unfailingly, they step in, in the name of unity, to prevent the uh, Marxist-Leninists uh, from having a voice. Um, and this is what they did actually on, on, on that occasion. Um, you know, it's very similar. Uh, uh, and of course, by taking uh, this petty bourgeois ridiculous line, they actually killed the women's liberation movement. It was first a, lib a, a laughing stock and then it disappeared, even though the need for women's emancipation, the need for women to have equality with men, remained and, uh, uh, just as strong as ever. Um, and it's interesting that uh, you know, people who profess to be Marxists were actually pushing and facilitating the most ridiculous types of, of bourgeois feminism, uh, lesbianism, everything was being promoted as the road to liberation. Um, uh, things which were totally an anathema uh, to working class women with a family to feed and an earning to, uh, a living to earn, uh, you know, who could, could not but mock uh, all these silly university girl little bits of fun uh, that they thought would be so appealing to the working class movement. Um, and, you know, talking about the Trotskyites sabotaging in this way, uh, in the name of Marxism, sabotaging a potentially a vibrant movement. And we see very much the similar things happening in Stop the War, where the Trotskyites, that's today, where the Trotskyites have been mobilized uh, along with the revisionists. And what are they doing? They uh, propagate the bourgeois propaganda against the progressive regimes. That's number one. They're all, you know, wicked dictatorships and all the rest of it. Uh, secondly, they prevent, uh, do everything they can to stop uh, revolutionary politics being heard. Thirdly, they flatly refuse uh, to allow the message of the anti-war movement to be taken to the trade unions, to be taken to the working class who actually have the power to stop the war, uh, to stop the uh, breaches of, uh, uh, you know, to stop the war crimes. Uh, by refusing to handle war material and, and things of that nature. But they actually say, no, we can't do that. We can't ask workers to sacrifice their jobs. Um, and for this reason, uh, they also, of course, are uh, mobilizing to contain the anti-war movement within the bounds of parliamentarism. The height of activity for them is to write a letter to your MP uh, you know, and if you're feeling really strongly about it, you can go and stand outside Parliament with a placard. And that is the limit. You can't, you're not allowed to go beyond that because this would disrupt the unity of the movement. And of course, the other aim is to bring, to bring people who become disillusioned with social democracy to rustle them back into the Labour Party and to create support for, for imperialism in that way. Um, so, if you like, those are some of the lessons that we learned from the Women's Liberation Movement. And uh, yes, uh, I have been asked to say that this is all documented in this book that uh, was written 
at the time of the women's liberation movement, which um, on the one hand uh, describes, well, puts the Marxist point of view on the subject of women's liberation, explains it in, in great detail, and on the other hand tells you about the women's liberation movement and what was going on there, the, the theories that were being put, uh, uh, promoted in uh, opposition to revolutionary theory and so on and so forth. And one particular thing that I would like to do, I found a wonderful quotation in here that I'd forgotten all about uh, when I was um, just trying to refresh my memory in case they asked me to say something today, which I'm afraid they have done. Um, and uh, this was um, on Trotsky, the Lenin writing on Trotsky. And he said, Trotsky unites all those to whom ideological decay is dear, all who are not concerned with the defense of Marxism, all Philistines who do not understand the reasons for the struggle and who do not wish to learn, think and discover the ideological roots of the divergence of views. At this time of confusion, disintegration and wavering, it is easy for Trotsky to become the hero of the hour and gather all the shabby elements around himself. Well, we've lived it, we've seen it. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to say a few words, really, about um, 1975, because this set me thinking about the, the period. Um, and um, obviously I was there, and um, I do remember, of course, that the Vietnam War stopped in 1975, and that we all voted, or most people, we didn't, I didn't certainly, voted to go into the common market, as it was called then. But it also set me thinking, actually, about the early feminist movement, which I was not active in. Um, um, I went to a few meetings and didn't like them very much. Um, it was a very, very anti-man emphasis in the early 70s. And there were two bookshops that I know of, one in, Is one in Islington, <coughs> Upper Street, and one in the Charing Cross Road, where it was for women's bookshops, but you weren't allowed to take baby boy ba baby boys in. So if you'd actually gone and had a baby boy, you were you were out. <laughs> and I don't know what you were supposed to do with them, or how how humanity would continue without you know the occasional baby be boy being born. And I also remember once I lived in, in these dim and distant days. I lived in Kensington and Chelsea which is rather smart, but well, it was rather smart. And, but of course it had council flats, um, uh, as, as they did in those days. They had all been privatised. And I went along to this one consciousness raising thing. And everybody, what they wanted to do on a Friday night was to go round to the council estates and tell the women not to make dinner for their husbands. <laughs> and I remember piping up and said, oh, that's payday. <laughs> you don't make a, you know, not to make a dinner on payday seemed absolutely as if you were really asking for trouble. And that was actually the political understanding that most of these um, groups had. They were all very, very keen on abortion, but none of them were very, very keen on sort of, um, you know, society socialising itself so that we could have childcare and, um, and still live a life. And um, so I don't think much of feminism, to be quite honest. Um, uh, I didn't think much of it then, and I don't think much of it now. The real feminism, of course, is getting equality uh, with men and women, um, real equality. But, but it's impossible without socialism. We can make a few advances, and obviously this is going to tell us about one. Um, though how great an advance it was, I don't know, because it's sort of what we've got is almost equal low pay isn't it? And it's like we sort of worry so much about getting almost equal pay that we forget that actually pay should actually be pay. But um, I'll leave it at that because we've all said enough and the film's worth watching. It's not perfect, but it's a bit of a hoot. of it is really extraordinary.